I recently received an intriguing question from Daniela. She has officially reached her weight loss goal, and now she wants to know what the heck does she do now? How does she stop losing weight? So this is a really important question because it's one that most of us don't consider when chasing that elusive weight loss goal. But it's really, really important to maintain that weight loss after you have gained those results. So in this video, I'm going to address all the different things one should consider and practice to maintain your efforts without being in a calorie deficit. So first and foremost, congratulations, Daniela, for officially meeting your weight loss goal. This is such a long and hard journey. So getting to that destination point is really important, but it's also important to keep in mind all the things you've learned along the way. Those habits do need to be maintained on a rather consistent level. The first thing you wanna do is proceed with caution. So many people get overconfident when they meet any particular goal that they start slacking a little bit and start falling back into old behaviors and inevitably getting to the same result that they were trying to get away from in the first place. So we wanna continue our meal prep, we wanna continue our exercise, we wanna continue our healthful meal choices. It's great to wanna to celebrate, but do so with a health-promoting activity. Instead of beer and pizza, maybe you can go on a hike with friends or go on a canoeing trip or something. It's important to recognize this new identity that you've created for yourself. So weight loss isn't just about getting rid of the weight, it's about taking care of yourself and becoming that person that you so envision and deserve. <laughs> So just because you've reached the goal doesn't mean you have to throw away everything that you've learned along the way. You also might want to consider setting new goals. So maybe maintaining that weight for a specific duration would be a great place to start. And then when you reach that goal, you may want to add some more muscle or some more flexibility or something along those lines. There are so many things you can do with your health. So it's important to always have that vision in mind and to be you know, striving for a particular ideal. This will also keep you on track and keep you motivated. So again, you don't slide back into those old habits. The second thing I want you to consider is whether this is really your ideal body weight. Perhaps that arbitrary number you've been chasing on the scale is not your ideal body weight. Maybe it's a little bit lower and you just need to continue your healthful habits and your body will let you know along the way where its comfortable set point is. So neither myself, nor you, nor your doctor, none of us know what your ideal set point is for your weight. You just have to feed your body the proper materials in order to get there in the first place. So if you continue losing weight, don't freak out unless you get to a BMI of 18.5, which would begin causing an equal amount of health issues as being overweight would. Studies do show that a lower BMI around 19 or 20 is considered rather ideal and promotes the most health benefits. So looking at the typical American 24, 24 and a half for the top end of that demarcation line might be a little higher than you really want to um, strive for. Your body is a very sophisticated machine. Whether you are increasing your exercise or increasing your calorie content, it will adjust accordingly in order to burn more off through your resting metabolic rate or through heat. So we don't always know what's ideal for our body. So use this time frame to experiment and listen to your body. If you're hungry all the time, clearly you need more nutrition, particularly complex carbohydrates like beans or whole grains or potatoes and such. Those will help you gauge your proper satiation rate. We don't wanna be starving all the time. You no longer need to be in an intentional calorie deficit, but if it happens to be lower simply based on the types of foods you eat, then that's perfectly fine which is exactly the next point I wanna make. And those are the alterations you wanna to make to your diet now that you've officially reached a place where you're comfortable with your weight loss. Research out of Penn State shows that you want to maintain your protein intake regardless of what phase you're in when it comes to weight gain, weight loss, weight maintenance, all of these phases require the same amount of protein. So to get a rough calculation of how much you require on a regular basis, just take 0.4 grams of protein times your current body weight. So if you're 110 pounds, that would be the equivalent of approximately 40 grams of protein per day. So it's not a lot. Or for a 130 pound woman, that would be approximately 47 grams per day. So very small increments in protein. And again, you can find these in a variety of plant-based sources. From greens to beans, there is plenty of protein in the plant-based realm. You also wanna be cautious when it comes to these calculations on protein because these are the upper limit levels. It's basically set up that way to ensure that everybody gets enough. And there's also the caveat that this is based on lean body mass. So if you're overweight, you don't necessarily add those additional pounds for the fat mass. These calculations also exclude certain populations like nursing or pregnant women or other people with different health conditions. 
When it comes to calories in general, you do want to increase them slowly by eating more foods rich in complex carbohydrates. So again, that would be our beans, our rice, our quinoa, potatoes, sweet potatoes, lentils, peas, and veggies. These will allow your body to reach that natural set point without a ton of added effort. You don't have to be quite as diligent as you had been losing the weight in the first place. But you do want to keep those overt fats at a minimum. This should be a quantity of fats that was similar to the diet you were consuming while in the weight loss phase, especially in the first six months following the weight loss, because this is when your body's really going to fight back and try to put on those pounds again, because that is where it's comfortable. Your body wants to gain weight. It wants to have that extra surplus. So generating that new metabolic rate and that new set point is going to show your body, I no longer need to hold on to this weight. It's not serving me. The next thing you want to think about when reaching your weight loss goal is how to be your own personal scientist. You're going to start experimenting with these different slightly higher calorie foods little by little in a very gradually systematic process in order to determine what your body can take in and manage without gaining the weight back. So these are things like nuts and seeds, dried fruit, bread, pastas, all those different slightly processed items, but also the higher fat foods like the avocados or the coconut that you can find in nature. So don't go overboard. <laughs> Again, don't go out and get that beer and pizza or some ice cream or something, even if it's vegan. Just stick with the principles that got you here in the first place. Follow the basics of calorie density as closely as you did losing the weight. Keeping in mind portion sizes and different macronutrients to some extent. Don't go crazy on trying to get all specific about macronutrients because there's it's really more of a range than it is like a specific amount or grams that you're supposed to get in a particular day. I always err on the side of minimal fat, slightly minimal protein, and a ton of complex carbohydrates. That's really the diet of the majority of ancient civilizations and all the blue zones, all the people who have lived the longest with the highest populations and centenarians. It just makes the most sense. And it seems to work really well for my body and for the people I work with. The next thing I want to talk about may seem a little counterintuitive, but there's actually a lot of evidence out there showing that this is super helpful for maintaining your weight loss. So we want to weigh ourselves daily at this point. It's no longer a weekly process. Now your weight is stable and you need to know from a day to day basis how much it's fluctuating because you don't want to get on the scale one day and see you're five pounds overweight and then have to go through the rigmarole of the calorie deficit phase. Nobody wants to be in that phase. It's super uncomfortable. <laughs> We all want to be eating the satisfying quantities of food that we desire. So in order to do that, make sure you're checking your weight every day to make sure you're in a general range. Yes, this is going to fluctuate somewhat from day to day based on bowel movements and physical activity and how much you ate the day before, but that's the basic idea. You are using it as a tool to decipher your allotted calories for the day. So if you're a little high, maybe you want to back off a little bit. If you're a little low, maybe you can have a little bit extra, or maybe you just want to keep going and listen to your body and your hunger and your satiety signals to get you to where you need to be. And you'll get better with this with time. If you're coming off of a severe food addiction or a binge eating disorder or problems with emotional eating, it can be a little tricky trying to figure out when the heck you're truly hungry and when the heck you're truly full, because even apples can be binged upon by plant-based individuals. And it just, it gets to be a point where you realize, is this healthful or is this compulsive? And as soon as you can distinguish those two, then you can go forward eating the proper quantities of food. So again, this takes practice, be patient with yourself, and you'll inevitably develop these skills. The last thing I want you to consider after reaching your weight loss goal is your exercise maintenance. So you probably have already started incorporating some of this during the weight loss phase, but now it is crucial. If we don't maintain some sort of regular physical activity, we will inevitably shift back into a higher weight because there is so much junk in our environment when it comes to processed food and animal products and all of those vegan goodies that we are so likely to give into them from time to time. They are ubiquitous in our environment and very, very few of us are able to abstain a hundred percent. And those who are able to abstain probably already have an exercise regimen in place. Exercise not only maintains your metabolic function, but it's also great for recalibrating all the different mechanisms in our body that regulate our hormones, our sleep, our mood. Think of exercise more so for the mental health aspects than for the physical aspects. And I think it will be a little more enjoyable and seem more purposeful. 
This is also a great place to throw in that strength training. We want to maintain our bone mass, our functionality as we age, but also our tone, strong body. Increasing your muscle mass is going to help you dramatically improve your likelihood of maintaining this weight loss. And the last thing a lot of people don't think about is we grow very familiar with a certain portion of food as we go throughout our lives. So learning how to gauge how much to eat at eat any given meal without weighing and measuring your food is a skill. And that again, takes a lot of practice, but it might fluctuate now that you are in a weight maintenance phase. But if you want to maintain the same volume of food that you were eating prior to losing the weight, then you want to incorporate this additional physical activity so you can continue consuming those additional calories on a regular basis. I'm a huge volume eater and I work out every day to make sure that I am able to eat the amount of food that my body wants to eat. So it's just another fail safe way of maintaining that weight loss. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I love seeing your guys' comments in the section below. So anytime you wanna reach out to me and have a similar question like Daniela did, then feel free and I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability. So again, a big congrats to Daniela and I will see you guys in the next video.